Hi, I'm Fahad. Come in. So we're in High Street House in West London. So I was project architect on this project before kind of subsequently moving into one of the flats on my own. We're in the workspace, which is sort of um, kind of a shared co-working lounge. So it's a mixed use space that's used by the residents for kind of working from home. Sometimes it also becomes temporarily public. So it's also used for pop-up shops and exhibitions. And it also kind of fosters a sense of community because you have a visual connection to people coming in and out of the building. Even though it's kind of a small co-working space serving kind of studio flats, there are bigger ideas in her about changing lifestyles and changing living and working patterns. So one of the conversations we always had when we were working on the proposals for this building was this idea of accidental encounters. So this is kind of a detail on the staircase, it's kind of a one book library and that slot in the balustrade is a slot for a book that you can leave for your neighbour. So the idea is that you might leave a book for your friend and they pick it up on their way up or their way down. So yeah, this book is quite mad. So this is a photo of Peshawar. Peshawar is a city in northwest Pakistan and this book is full of random photos from the 20th century that were taken there. So if someone wants to check that out, they can. So this kind of object I'm sitting in, this is sort of, I guess, relating to that notion of a building within a building. So it takes this idea of a kind of serviced core and applies it to the scale of a studio flat. So this kind of core is the thing that has all the functional elements, such as the kitchen, the bathroom, the bed, kind of nooks and crannies for living and sleeping and so on. And then that sculptural object that sits in the middle of the space, it doesn't touch any walls, so that sculpture defines the spaces. The idea of kind of cellular spaces coming off a corridor, despite some kind of 20th century innovations in open plan living, it remains largely unquestioned for over 200 years. And I do think it's kind of the role of young architects to challenge that a little bit and come up with new models for living. So in that sense, this flat is kind of a bit of an experiment. All the beds in this building are bespoke, um, and each one's a little bit different, but they all have kind of integrated storage and create opportunities for you to kind of put down a book or display objects. So it was a way to kind of personalize your space. Increasingly, the bedroom is really important, and I think that's to do with kind of our changing relationship to technology. We end up spending more and more time in bed, not just as a space to sleep, but as a space to watch movies or have a conversation or spend time together or just relax. So the bedroom is a room within a room. So by kind of, you know, having the kind of soffit and the lower ceiling height, it does give you a sense of kind of enclosure and a sense that you are in a separate space, even though the flat is actually completely open plan. I spend a lot of time here actually, particularly in the kind of um, early stages of projects. I'll just kind of pin something up and kind of just think it through. Sometimes there's a temptation to always be doing something and I think idle time is actually very underrated. Your mind kind of goes to places, you know. I think it's, it's kind of cliche, isn't it? Everyone says they have the best ideas in the shower and so on, but I think like you do have to sometimes create that space in your workday. This is my reading armchair. So this is in solid ash. It's designed by an industrial designer called Konstantin Grichic. I think sometimes there's a real dissonance between architecture and furniture, and this feels so inherently architectural. And I like this idea that kind of all the timber sections you see in it, you could find in your local timber sawmill, but they used to create something that's quite precise and machined. It has kind of quite generous proportions. It's quite comfy, um, seems to work quite well. I'm not a chair dictator. <laughs> Any, anyone can sit in the chair. <laughs> I don't think I'm that controlling, actually. I think, and often in kind of architectural photography, you have to man kind of manufacture those traces of life. But I think that's what can add a kind of story and level of personalization to spaces. We don't have kind of that much stuff and so on, but yeah, we haven't tried to be overly manicured about it either. These were made in um, Afghanistan in the 80s. Herat in Afghanistan had a big glass blowing industry, from what I understand, and a lot of that has died out now. I think there's just a couple of people doing it. But I guess the reason I like them is the kind of stories that usually they would be thrown out because this one is kind of wonky. So it's sort of about kind of seeing the beauty in things that are imperfect. 
think sometimes there's a real consensus on what's considered good work and often it's quite very tightly controlled and about just remembering the beauty in things that aren't completely refined and perfect you know I think that's an important lesson for designers so there's a shelf up there that they live in sometimes um, or sometimes they just hang out next to the plants over here as well <laughs> they become kind of part of your life and they, they become a bit lost so actually having this conversation is making me see them again which is kind of nice Thanks for coming. Bye.